welcome once again to Community Viewpoint. I'm John Pollock, your host for the evening. And our first segment tonight is going to be with the sweet young ladies here from the Nye Community Coalition. And they're going to be talking about some of the, the youth programs that uh, they have to offer. And uh, this lovely lady next to me, Sierra, is part of uh, the, oh, which one? Oh, the AmeriCorps, which I'm part of also. And her friend uh, Katie is possibly, she's shadowing her in a good way, and possibly she will be a AmeriCorps member also in the future. There are a lot of, uh, well, not a lot of us, but uh, there are grants that are available. Stacy Smith from the coalition has some extremely good talents finding out grants for things like that. I'm with Westcare myself, so that's where I come in with uh, the AmeriCorps also. So um, we do a lot of good. We have youth. We have, well, I guess there's some middle-aged uh, AmeriCorps, and then we've got the old ones here like me. And uh, But uh, there are a lot of things. It, it's like Peace Corps, but uh, uh, within the United States. So if you want to look for yourself, if you're looking for AmeriCorps, uh, membership or uh, grants it, it's it's online too and there's a lot of good things that AmeriCorps does so I like to share that with you also and there's a lot of a lot of good things that the Nye Community Coalition does and Sierra and Katie will be telling you about that this evening so <clears throat> the show is yours I am the youth coordinator for Nye Community Coalition also the wellness and nutrition um, manager for uh, a grant that I was doing for nutrition. Um, right now, our youth organization has just got their boost, and we're starting with 15 youth members. The beginning of youth organization started in 2005 with a grant for prevention in tobacco. Um, our youth go out and they they bring awareness to our community from youth to youth um, about tobacco and drug prevention. We've expanded over the years um, with prescription prevention and teen pregnancy prevention. Um, our upcoming event for March, um, we actually have two. Our first event will be Kick Butt Day, and it's an annual event that our youth have been participating in for years. Um, it's where their, our youth go out to a local park and they speak out by picking up cigarette butts in the playground areas. Um, we presented these um, kick butts day cigarette butts to the uh, town board previous years to get signs up um, for our youth to be smoke free areas for playgrounds. It's a really good um, you know, program just to get the kids that play in the playgrounds a safe area to play. So our next event is March 17th and that will be kick butts day. Uh, it will be at Petrick Park um, between Basin and 160. And our youth are going to go out there and we're going to have a really fun day. Um, we're going to pick up all the cigarette butts at 9 o'clock in the morning. And then um, while we do it, we're going to, you know, film a commercial and, you know, get our youth out there. And then our next event is that following Saturday on the 24th, which is the Hope Run. And the Hope Run has been going on for about three to four years now. And our youth participate in this by manning water stations, running themselves. Um, and we just go out there and we encourage our youth to participate with the community and other members. Uh, this is a really good way for our youth to, you know, show their face and get out there. Our Hope Run actually will be supporting our police officers uh, this year with um, the Baker to Vegas run. Oh, right. So, um, you know, I encourage everyone of every age and especially youth uh, to come out there and help out. Um, Laura Osland at the Communities Co Night Communities Coalition is the main person of this, and so you can speak to her. But for youth, concerning youth, I would be more than happy to have more, like I said, 15 members right now, but we're always looking to expand. Um, our youth are always, you know, in the community yearly. We do two, one to two, um, you know, events per month. Um, April is Easter, and so we'll be doing the Easter pic picnic for um for the community, and that includes, you know, Easter activities, Easter hunts, picnics. So we're busy, um, and we're always looking for more youth to come and join us. Would you want another? Did I invite you to Earth Day, April 20th? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, it's Saturday at uh, 
uh, Ian Deutsch Memorial Park. Yep, and we look forward to coming to that. That's also on our calendar. Okay, and uh, what else do you have for us? Let's see, you have the kick butts, the hope. Um, you have, uh, Katie, did you have anything else about any information for the folks out there to uh, uh, what's happening with the, uh, the coalition? Um, or she's doing pretty, all the yeah, talking. Okay. Really okay. <laughs> what we also wanted to mention also the. Um, this is another facet uh, for the youth. This is uh, Lloyd's uh, area, but this is the, the Youth Works. And this is for what age groups? 16 to 21. Okay. And these are for people who are looking for um, job experience. Uh, it's usually a stipend pay, um, but they have different steps. Um, you know, you go for 30 days, you work, you get work experience, but all different types of work experience. And it's a really awesome program. Like I said, I work at Nike Community Coalition, so I always see these youth around campus. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they get their training for education, their GED, um, they get hands on work experience, um, office skills, outdoor skills, painting skills, moving skills. Uh, just different things that they can use to go into the career aspects of life and um, branch out from there. And Night Community Coalition gives them a good outlet to work together as youth. Yeah, because we had some of the, the, the youth at the, the library uh, off and on for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And your next uh, meetings will be March 13th and the 27th. Correct. And April 10th and the 24th. And these posters are up all over town. And this is an expanding program that's been going on for quite some time. And they're always looking for more people because it's such a great program for our youth to get involved in. Right. And then they're also your, the youth are going to be learning how to cook over there. You're going to have another youth another works. Facet. Yep, youth works is um, partnering with Mountain Falls on our community cafe at um, the old Mans Elementary School, which is now the new Nye Community Coalition campus. And um, it looks like they're going to be getting trained on how to be bussers, um, chefs, waitresses, all different things with our cafe. So that's a fun new thing for our youth to be intrigued mm -hmm. in doing. Yes, it's something, uh, another career for uh, everyone to go into. Uh, it's fantastic that uh, you have that uh, facility and you're able to utilize it for the, uh, the cooking over there. The, uh, you may be doing some gardening too, I believe, you have your own garden. Yep, they're um, looking to do a garden um, on campus actually, and we hope that our cafe and our garden will coincide together. Um, by once we get our garden up and running, that we can use the food that we produce in our garden for our cafe. So we actually look forward to teaching our youth how to garden and make some really good fruits and vegetables and then eventually serve it to our community. That's great. And you could give it, uh, send it out to some of the older folks too, and uh, mm -hmm. everybody could uh, share into that. In, in yep. that. So it, it's, the campus is fantastic if you haven't been there. If you haven't gone to school, had kids over there. It's the Mans campus. It's right in front of the nice community or the Nye uh, school district offices are right behind Walmart. Yep. And it's just a huge campus and just perfect for so many things. And it's growing, it's expanding. And in this day and age, we need as much training as we can get to be diverse because gosh knows, you know, what field we'll have to go into. We have to be retrained for new uh, uh, jobs and new things to do after you know if we get laid off at some at one job there's training here at the nice community coalition for other jobs also yep absolutely yeah. and and americorps uh, we have eight americorps at our um, coalition so so let's look at that again the hope run is going to that's the when the baker to las vegas run is what the um it's not when the baker to las vegas run is but it is a little bit later okay it is later but we'll be sponsoring we'll be helping them out with the donations that we get for that because i thought it usually runs into the same same time i have the uh, mm -hmm. we have the uh, earth day event uh, so that's april 21st it may happen that that uh, that time also so i want to tell everybody that uh, since you're going to be there for the earth day event at the old Honeysuckle Park, which is in Deutsch Memorial Park now. Uh, we're going to be a lot bigger this year. We've got uh, BLMs coming over there with adopt a pet or, or an animal, you know, the burrows, horses, and things mm -hmm. like that. And I just got a call from my friend Allison from the uh, Ash Meadows. They'll be back there again this year. 
they had a conflict last year. Well, they, they were doing something on the same day for Earth Day also. Um, hopefully Donna Lamb will be over there throwing pottery. Uh, for the Amargosa Conservancy, we'll have the Southern Iconic Conservation District. We have so many things that are coming up to Native Americans. Paul Elefante mentioned that we'll probably have, they'll do an opening prayer this year, do some uh, drums in the beginning of the, uh, uh, the program, which will add a little bit of uh, more class to it. And uh, we'll have a lot of things that are environmentally sound. We'll have music, we'll have food, we'll have, uh, we'll have the youth over there. Definitely have the youth involved. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, plus, you could sign up for the, the town cleanup, which will be May, I believe it's 12th. It's the day before Mother's Day, so we clean up the town before our mothers uh, have dinner <laughs> on that Sunday. <laughs> so you're welcome to come to be part of that with the NICE Community Coalition yep. and have a group and maybe you can clean up around mm -hmm. Not because it's your dirt or anything, but around the your own campus over there, because a lot of uh, things blow. Um, oh, that's right; it's right next to Salvation Army. Mm -hmm. there. There's a lot of uh, garbage back there for whatever reason. But uh, yeah, so if you all come on out, uh, uh, we'll have sign up there, and I have to contact the Chamber of Commerce because they're usually the the, the focal point. You usually uh, call them to uh, put aside a section that you want to. Uh, uh, clean up so we'll it'll be another uh, great event and it's gonna be a lot bigger this year so uh, so you come out there and uh, we'll enjoy that now the the town cleanup uh, once again will be at the, uh, the Calvet I but uh, April 21st during the uh, uh, Earth Day event you can sign up for it there when we have that event so Katie and Sierra well, let's talk about what you're here for again the youth organization Yep, our youth organization, and our next meeting is actually March 16th, 2012, and it will be at Nike Community Coalition campus at 4 o'clock. So we look forward to getting more youth, and um, we hope that they want to come out in the community and prevent drugs and tobacco use. Right, and I thank you both for coming here, and I thank you for watching, and uh, we'll be moving on. I just want to say one thing. Uh, we're going to be losing Jeff, our technician. Uh, Jeff Keating, he'll be gone in a couple weeks, uh, but he's been here for so many years and he's the one that puts me on TV, whether you like it or not, he puts me here. But uh, I wish him well in his next endeavor. He's, uh, uh, we couldn't have done it without Jeff. So Jeff, I thank you for all you've done through the, the years and I wish you well in your next uh, endeavor. So on behalf of uh, Katie, Sierra and myself, John Pollock, I wish you the best and we'll see you next week. The next segment will be coming up in just a minute. So I thank you for watching and we'll see you later. And welcome back. Uh, I'm John Pollock, your host for this segment, and we have as a special treat this evening Jack Sanders from the Sanders Family Winery. And we're sitting in the main, no, that's the green screen, sorry about that. <laughs> we're not as lucky as to be over there. Jack's been a fixture in the, the Prump Valley for, what'd you say, since 85? Yeah, tw almost 28 years. Yeah, and you have uh, this winery, it's on, uh, what's the name of the street? Kellogg Road. Uh -huh. That's near the Artesian area by Hafen High School, or uh, Grade School. It's up from, uh, yeah, it's about a mile and a half uh, east of Hafen uh, Elementary School and about uh, three quarters of a mile west of uh, Homestead Road. Oh, there's a little Kellogg. map of where it's at. Uh, it's uh, it's your second winery then. You're, you're, you've delved into wineries. This is the second time. I remember you were on an... an on a place called, it was Winery Road? Mm -hmm. all well, places. it used to be called Valencia. Was that uh, what it was? We had it changed uh, to oh, Winery yeah. Road. And uh, that's where we built uh, Prompt Valley Vineyards, uh -huh. Prompt Winery. Uh, that's been, uh, we founded that in 1988. And oh, uh, now we, uh, gosh, that's a long time ago. Yeah. 22 years. Yeah. And uh, I remember that coming into town. It was one of the favorite places I wanted to go. Uh, and uh, your new place here is just so it's fantastic. You have so Thank many, you. 
so many different things that you can do over here. Here's, let's look at some pictures. Uh, that's a beautiful roadway, and this trees are manicured so beautiful. Yeah, we have a uh, we uh, purposely we made a lot of mistakes with the very first winery, and uh, fortunately we didn't make uh, the same mistakes. Although we made some new ones uh -huh. with this winery, but that's uh, we have a dual driveway which allows. Uh, uh, entrance both going and coming which accommodates tour oh, buses that's right it'll also accommodate uh, RVers and we're very very much interested in the RV traffic we want them to come to visit us right and you said also you have the turnaround for buses that goes completely around exactly there. there's no no backing up the tour buses uh, pull around and we have a private entrance for tour buses that visit the winery oh excellent yeah. yes the, uh, uh, we we changed the architecture on this one we wanted to come up with a provincial Tuscan uh, style winery and uh, so we uh, we did it in that manner in that mode so it ties in extremely well with the desert the backdrop of course is uh, Mount Charleston which is always a beautiful mm -hmm. uh, scene uh, these are our vineyards we're actually looking uh, through mm -hmm. these uh, Petite Syrah vineyard at the main winery building itself with the uh, bell tower our control room for all of our events and uh, of course the winery behind it uh, we do a lot of events there. Uh, one yeah, of the things keep that, this one up there, would you, for a little bit? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, one of the things that we found, uh, as far as the Pahrump community is concerned, is that uh, there is a lot of people who like to look for things to do, uh, especially on weekends. And in the summertime, uh, we used to, at the old winery, do a lot of concerts, uh, Broadway shows, and things of this nature. That's right. What you're looking at here is basically a full set uh, in the evening in our amphitheater. And this is called uh, Show Tune. It was a, a Broadway production. Jade Productions did it for us with full lighting, full sound. Uh, we had a live orchestra there. And uh, we did a lot of events last summer. All of them were totally sold out. Uh -huh. And uh, we're anticipating that uh, this year when we release our schedule starting in April, I think is our first event. And that's sponsored by Kiwanis. And that'll be an evening of comedy. So that'll be kind of fun. Okay. That, let's take some more pictures up there, Ryan. If we can. And this is another one from one of the... Well, that's the same show. It's right. just a different, a uh, uh, little more intimate scene. Uh, of, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, that show was about... This is a the... shot of our tasting room mm -hmm. uh, where uh, we have guests. Our gift shop uh, individuals are coming in and they're looking at our goods and checking our uh, logo wear as well as our uh, special jams and jellies that we make as well as, of course, our wines. You make jams and jellies? We do that too. Okay. This is our lady wine pourer. Her name is Teresa Terrasana, and she is pouring wine at the very entrance. This is the uh, statue that uh, is at the very beginning of the driveway, uh, the in and out of the driveway. So that's the first thing you're going to see mm -hmm. when you drive up. And she is actually pouring wine. These are your actual grapes? Yeah, these, these are uh, from the uh, uh, Zinfandel vineyard. Uh, we have two vineyards that are fully in production. We're producing eight to 12 tons of grapes a year up there right now. And, uh, and, and we're producing our Petite Syrah as well as our Zinfandel and other wines right how, now. How long do you have to wait before they started uh, growing? The grapes the themselves, well, we buy what's called bench grafts. So it kind of gives us a heads up, sort of a couple of years growth on them. They, uh, then we plant them. Uh, Generally, wines will come into production about four years after planting, and about seven years are really starting to good, do good full production on them. And this is your vineyard? This is also part of our vineyards. This uh, You're looking at the uh, West Vineyard, oh. and uh, there's about 1,400 vines that are in that vineyard, mm. and about the same amount in the uh, East Vineyard. Excellent. And there was a driveway again, and we're back into the, the main area with the uh, the wine tasting in the background. It's a nice, warm feeling. I, I feel warm just be sitting here in front of the green screen. Uh, the colors you picked were just fantastic. Well, actually, I, we have to give uh, my wife, Betsy, credit for that. Uh, and the she, blue over there. She chose yeah. all of that. And the chair, that the little blue chair that appears like you're sitting in, yeah. uh, those are the original chairs from... Bugsy Siegel's Flamingo Hotel. No way. And they are. There's a lot of history ah. involved with that. Oscar didn't get that from you. Huh? <laughs> so, yeah. No. Well, no. that's great. No. The, uh, the, the, the nice thing about Pahrump and the nice thing about the wineries, uh, we're, uh, I think somewhere you just showed me an article that said 50% of Nevada's wineries, I think, are right here in Pahrump. I think that's probably going to increase. Uh, one of the things that our town has to look at is what are our tourism assets? What do we have here that's going to bring people in to visit our community? 
and the wineries certainly are. Oh my uh, God! A, a, a great that yeah. There's an overall shot of the uh, of uh, the jade production from out there. Right. But. And, and doing these shows and doing things like this gives people the opportunity to come out from Las Vegas to uh, stay overnight, uh, see a couple of good quality shows, and uh, taste wines. But that's not all that we have in Pahrump that uh, really uh, has great assets for us. Uh, we, uh, we have uh, uh, partnerships with uh, most all of the hotels, right. uh, certainly all the RV parks, uh, Mountain Falls Golf Course, as mm -hmm. well as the, the old Executive Golf Course. Yes. Uh, the Calvada course, and uh, so we tie in with that. So there's a lot of things for people to do and uh, come out. Uh, th these are all of our nice assets that we have here. Yes, you, you got the little niche market. People, uh, uh, you advertise, I imagine, too. Uh, we do, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's word of mouth, which always helps. Uh, generally, always the best. Uh, mm -hmm. It, it, it works it works well. It's a little slower than normal, but mm -hmm. uh, it works it works extremely well. And we get visitors, John. Uh, uh, it's kind of interesting. Uh, we keep pretty close tabs as to where our visitors are coming from, and most of our visitors are are uh, are coming obviously uh, out of Las Vegas and California, uh, some out of Arizona, and I would say probably about forty two percent of those visitors are from the the, the immediate areas vicinity within a three hundred mile radius of us, but. The balance of them are international and from all other states and all other countries. So we are seeing a large influx of individuals coming from Amsterdam, coming from China. Uh, the China market is opening up and the people love to come out through this way, especially on their way to Death Valley. Right. We're also seeing individuals who are coming from Canada. The Canadian market uh, is just becoming awesome for us here. So they, they, people are now visiting from all over the world and most every state in the United States. Right, and you have your finger on that too because you're on that, what, the advisory, or the um, tourism board? Yeah, I've been involved with tourism both at the state level and at the uh, uh, district level, mm -hmm. and now I'm on the uh, advisory board for the town for tourism. But uh, uh, if I, I would have to say in all honesty that probably uh, the ENCOT, Nevada Commission on Tourism, was probably one of the most influential and helpful governmental agencies and in days like today it's probably not a good thing to start praising government but I have to tell you the state of Nevada has one of the most active and probably the most effective tourism commissions in the United States and they do a wonderful job. Well that is one of the the mainstream of the, the of the state also the, the tourism we have uh, gambling and then mining so you know those are the things that they're centered around also they're and you put them in the proper order <laughs> tourism is the biggest industry right. followed by gaming followed by mining right and then of course retail this yes. is a great shot i'm glad that this one showed up this is actually looking at the no paw range looking at california from our vineyard no way uh, yeah isn't that a beautiful shot it is. Uh, those are our vineyards in full in full bloom and uh of course, if you come out there today, uh, we are dormant right now. The vines are huh? not getting ready. They won't break until uh, March 24th, 25th, or 26th. <laughs> On one of those days, our vines will start breaking, and then we'll start seeing uh, production start, uh, uh, the, the grapes starting to grow, getting ready for production. But it's really a beautiful view uh, of, the, uh, of looking at the Nopal Range. And of course, there to the west and uh, to the east of us, we have, of course, the Spring Mountain Range, which is right. uh, oh, just a no gorgeous, again. gorgeous shot. So. <laughs> I've never seen them look any better. Too bad you don't have a little snow on the top of it. That's, that's an oddity. That's, that's well, hard I don't know get. about that. You know, people come to Pahrump because they want to get away from the, the snow, snow. So yeah. maybe it's not such a good idea to have yes, yes. too much snow up there. So this, you, you mentioned also there was a, a prior a winery or? Yeah. The, we only think about the only, the, the two of the wineries that we, we know of in, in recent years, but you mentioned there was, we have a couple minutes left. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. What else uh, did we have? In uh, the first, the first known commercial winery actually was here in Pahrump and it was founded by uh, Frank Pop Buell, uh, Buell Road. Uh -huh. uh, is the road which is actually if you go down Buell Road it dead ends right at the gates of the old Binion Ranch. Oh, and that's, that's right. where okay. Buell's uh, vineyards were and there's still remnants of the old winery. Now don't get visions of grandeur with uh, great uh, baluster walls and castle-like uh, effects and uh, towers like we have with all of our wineries here. 
you have to kind of imagine sort of a building half in, about 20 feet by 20 feet square, uh -huh. probably about nine feet maximum at height, and uh, half of it in the ground, half of it out, no windows. You, had to, you have to go down sort of cellar steps to get into it. And that's where Pop Buell made all of his wine. <laughs> and he actually sold his wine. They tell us, uh, uh, verbal history or oral history kind of tells us, he may have sold some of his wines to the Biltmore Hotel in, uh, in Los Angeles. There was, uh, there was somebody said at one time that uh, he probably sold his wines to the Furnace Creek Inn. That doesn't gel because of the timeline. It probably doesn't make sense because Furnace Creek Inn wasn't, uh, wasn't online at that particular time. The other fact is, is that uh, grape growing, when I first came to Pahrump uh, and talked with a lot of the farmers, and I'm talking about guys like Tim Hafen and Hollis Harris, guys like that, uh, that's why I found out that grapes would grow here and have been growing here for years and years and years. And you're keeping up that tradition. We're just now about out of time. And Jack, you got to come back again and again and again. And, and this is so interesting. And remember uh, there, what's the name of it? What's the address? Oh, it's 3780 East Kellogg Road, okay. Sanders Family Winery. 727. And we're open to the public uh, seven days a week from seven. 10 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock at night. 727-1776. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Ryan. Jeff, thank you for people watching. Get the right way. There you go.